from rock bottom to redemption, my shocking battle with alcoholism, $17,000 in debt, and the fight for financial freedom. I like that. We got a Boy. bit of a doozy on today's episode. It's going to be an exciting one, to say the least. In an emotional twist that no one saw coming, I am peeling back the curtain on a life-altering struggle that has shaken me to my core. The past year was nothing short of chaos. I found myself in the relentless grip of alcoholism, spiraling out of control, and watching my finances unravel as I drown in a staggering $17,000 of credit card debt. I was caught in a web of... I was caught in a web of addiction, denial, and ignoring the financial storm brewing just outside my door. But what happened was a turning point. A crossroads in my life that would either make or break me. For the past five months, while I was undergoing treatment to save my life, I did the unthinkable. I turned a blind eye to my mountain of debt. I thought somehow it would just disappear. Spoiler alert, it didn't. Today, though, the game has changed. I hit a breaking point and stared my demons straight in the face and made a decision that could rewrite my entire story. Armed with nothing but a modest sum of cash and a sheer determination, I did the impossible and reached out to my creditors. Bold, and I like it. My offer was simple, but bold. Take what I can give you or leave it. To my shock, nearly all of them agreed to be on a manageable repayment plan. Apple Card, in a surprising twist of fate, handed me a lifeline at 0% APR payment plan, which is a freaking amazing. But that wasn't the whole story. The real beast, the Chase account. They held a staggering $12,000 balance over my head and negotiations were brutal. In the end, I managed to knock it down to $5,700. That's amazing. I, oh. I'm not even sure how that's even possible. That's freaking awesome. But there was a catch. I have just 93 days to come up with the money. Okay, okay. The kicker, this chance to settle came courtesy of a modest payout after losing my job. An unexpected gift in the midst of the turmoil. I'm sharing my raw, real story just to clear my head but also to reach anybody out there who feels stuck, who's avoiding the nightmare of their financial mess, I want you to know one thing. There is hope. If I can make it through this gut-wrenching first call, so can you. It's time to stop running and start taking control, not just of debt, but of your life. Thank you for turning. Thank you for tuning in and allowing me to bring all this out into the open. This is just the beginning of my fight to reclaim my financial freedom and myself from i faced my debt no more regret for once i was ignored now i am restored i like that nice little rhyme on the end i'm a fan of that i like that a lot i honestly i didn't even know you could call up the credit card companies and ask for help that's kind of a crazy thing to do i like that we, we've talked about that before that you can do it i always say that it's worth it's worth an ask because the worst thing they can tell you is no what they're never going to do is be like, oh, since you asked, we're actually going to increase your amount of we're debt. Doubling your so, interest. Yeah. yeah, we're doubling it. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. So to our listener, what do you have? Do you have anything to say to them? I mean, I don't really think he's even asking for any help. He's just kind of telling us that he got a win of the week. Yeah. No, actually. Yeah. I'm good on you for crushing the alcoholism, uh, continuing your battle. That's a lifelong battle. And I know you got it. Um, and having the discipline to really buckle down and, get back in the game after such a pivotal moment, pivotal chapter in your life is tough. And to take on the finance, I mean, take on the scary banks. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty, that's pretty epic. I, I commend them. I commend them. That takes guts to really put yourself out there and tell people your story like that. Most people are very scared about their finances. They don't want to divulge too much. They're ashamed of it. People think that they're going to be judged for how much they make or they don't make enough or they make too little. And this guy's just putting it all out there. And I have great respect and great admiration for that. That's awesome. That's really something special. Um, Chris, what do you got for him? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I would want to tell him is like, I really want you to acknowledge the progress that you made, listener. Like, that's pretty cool that you've you've done something incredibly brave and incredibly difficult that most people don't do. First off, you faced your addiction. 
you know, it sounded to me, it sounded like it was alcoholism. I don't know what that's like. I have to imagine it's extremely difficult. So you handled that. You know, it sounded like you said you were le legitimately fighting for your life. So I don't know if that means like a recovery program or, or what does that mean? But like you face that and it sounds like you're overcoming it. And then not only that, you also overcame a financial situation that you found yourself in. And yeah, maybe we can look at it and say, you shouldn't have avoided the debt. You shouldn't have done all these things. But at the end of the day, yeah. it happened and that's okay. So we need to celebrate these small little moments because these small wins are what lead to such big victories over time. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like you said, those small victories, they mean so, so much. I mean, that's the turning point in the entire battle for, I mean, he said he's in the battle for, uh, for his self and for financial freedom. And I love that line. That's a great line. Yeah. I mean, I would say keep on it, man. Keep watching your, watching your credit score, watching your, you're watching your money and try and save as much as you can try and knock out that, uh, that big chase debt. Uh, in those 93 days, that can be crucial. I mean, that is just an absolute lifeline to knock it down to basically half. Um, that's huge, to say the least. That's absolutely huge. And that's freaking awesome. So freaking awesome. Yeah. I think is it's there... crazy that he actually, he he took on the, like, we talk about it, like, oh, you can always call and negotiate, but who actually does it? Yeah. So for him to actually do it, to call and, like, get that done. So for our listener, like, you really need to stick to those repayment pro plans, like, Good for you for calling and negotiating. And I'm glad that it worked out for you. But now you really need to make sure that you follow through with it, especially yeah. that chase one. Like you have 93 days. So you need to prioritize getting that one done. Cause my guess is if you don't, it's going to, they're going to retroactive hit it back all of it. So I would prioritize that one, especially if they said that the Apple card one is at a 0% interest for right now. I would just make the minimum payments and put everything that I possibly can at the chase stuff and make sure that we're sticking to like a, like ham and cheese type of budget. Like we are not going like beans, beans and rice, like whatever it is, you're not going out. You're not doing anything crazy. You're not spending extra money at the gym, extra money on Netflix or Hulu or HBO max. All of it is going towards putting as much of it as that debt as you possibly can. Cause you were just handed such an amazing lifeline. And I would hate to see you lose it for yourself, but I don't think that's going to happen because you were the one that took the action yourself. You're the one that made that call. You're the one that put in that hard work. So you're going to value it substantially more than someone who never tried and just happened to get their debt resolved for whatever reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like you said, there's no negative benefit. There's no negative repercussions from calling the credit card company. Well, that say, so since he's in like a repayment thing and they knocked his debt down a little bit, would that affect his credit score at all? Or what do you think? No, it, it shouldn't affect his credit score too much because he's like, if you go into like a debt consolidation type thing where you're consolidating all the debt into one place, that'll be another hard pull. Or if you're going to like a debt negotiator who's going to stop making payments for a while, that would also mess it up because you're no longer making payments or lowering the amount of debt. Mm -hmm. But my assumption is since they chose to just give him zero APR, he's still making payments on the debt. And then the other chase decides just to write off the debt. So it sounds like they that's just something that's happening outside of the credit score. They're just yeah. going to say, hey, if you pay this off, the $5,000 or whatever it is, $6,000, we're just going to forgive the other 6000 So that does actually bring up an, an important point is that I want you to keep in mind that when you write off that debt that's written off in a year is going to be taxable income next year. So that $6,000 or so that gets written off will be added to your income that you quote unquote made this year in 2024. So you're gonna have to pay that in 2025. Interesting. So you have to pay taxes on that. Yep. As, as if it was income because they're basically giving you a free $6,000. Yeah. So you have to pay taxes on that. Um, so, so they're going to be getting something in the mail. It's going to be called a 1095 C if I remember correctly, it's a taxable mm -hmm. form. They're saying like, Hey, we, you, we forgave, blank amount of debt for you to be like six or $7,000. So based off whatever your highest marginal tax rate is, just know you're going to have to be taxed on that. So I don't know, that'd be 20 or 30%, depending on what you make. So it's still, lower, it's, it's still a pretty good deal though. Well, it's, it's either you pay a little bit less on taxes or you pay the taxes on it or you pay the full amount. Don't let like, don't be so focused on the taxes that you're like, Oh no, I, I'd rather pay the full amount of debt. That's just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in any amount of debt, give them a call and see if they can write it off. Right off a portion of it. Yep. Gotcha. 
Because okay. regardless, the taxes will be smaller than the amount that you have to pay. And think about this. The money that you would have put towards that paying off that $6,000 would have been after-tax money. So you would have had to actually earn like seven dollars or $8,000, then it get taxed, then you pay off $6,000. So mm -hmm. either way, you're paying the taxes at some point. Yeah. No, yeah it's always better to have that money taken off and have to pay some taxes than not. But so many people get so focused on not paying taxes that they miss the forest or the trees. Yeah. And they get so worried like, oh, I can't have my debt written off. I'd rather save myself a thousand dollars on taxes than ten thousand dollars in payments. Maybe we should do another podcast on that, like how to call the creditors and be like, "Could you write this off?" Like, how does that? How does that even that conversation even go? Uh, I don't know. I've never made that call, but what I have to assume is it's something like this person called and told them, "We maybe we can get them on the podcast and ask them like precisely yeah. like what did you say?" But yeah. my assumption would be something to the effect of. Hey, I've been really trying hard to make these payments. And at this point, I'm going to declare bankruptcy. So here are the options. I owe you this amount of money. I can pay this or I'm going to declare bankruptcy. You guys get nothing. Yeah. Like your choice. And it's kind of the same thing that we talked about. Like the reason I, I feel like we don't even need to do that is you can go back and listen to the medical debt <laughs> podcast that we did where I gave scripts on that one of what to say. So it'd probably be the exact same script. Just now you're using it for credit card debt. Yeah, definitely. No, 100%. That's such an interesting. That's so interesting. Yeah, so this isn't a starter move. This is like a last resort to save your credit debt move. I mean, ideally, you don't find yourself in this situation where you're putting on so much debt. But I think it would be one of the first moves that you're going to do once you've like established that like I can no longer make these payments. I would probably first try to, I mean, this is kind of comes from an extreme ownership part of it, and it probably isn't the most correct thing. But for me, it would be, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make more money. I'm going to try to spend less money. If those mm -hmm. two things don't work, then I'm going to reach out to the credit credit company and tell them, like, I can't do this. But, you know, if you're someone who doesn't have that aversion that I do, and you're like, I'm going to call them first and see if they can lower it down, then I'm going to save money and stuff like that. Yeah. Then do it that way. But I think it should be, all of these things are happening pretty much simultaneously. You yeah, should yeah. be like, I have to first do this, fail at that, then try this, fail at that, then try this. Yeah. You're just 100%. making it, you're playing the game on harder than it has to be played. Definitely. No, 100%. Interesting. What an interesting viewer mailbag. We really appreciate you writing in and uh, telling us your story. Best of luck with all of that. This video podcast is sponsored by Mons on Wealth. The content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. We do not endorse specific products or services. Past performance does not guarantee future results. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests, not the podcast sponsor. It is crucial to consult with a qualified financial advisor or professional who can provide advice tailored to your specific needs before making any financial decisions, investments, or taking any other actions. If you are seeking specified help, you can reach out to Chris at monsonwealth.com.